It's Tuesday, May 14. Good afternoon. I'm Herman Green with your midday news. A special welcome to those of you watching online at onespotmedia.com. A student of the Camperdown High School is one of two persons fatally shot in Bull Bay St. Andrew last night. The deceased have been identified as 15-year-old Javon Morris and 55-year-old bar operator Garland Reese, otherwise called Anne. They were shot on Greenvale Road. Reports from the Elliston Road Police are that about 8.50, Javon and Miss Reese were among other persons inside a yard where her bar is located. Gunshots were heard and the police were called. Javon and Miss Reese were found suffering from bullet wounds. They died at hospital. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, says its job has been made more difficult and its resources stretched due to the recent number of child murders across the island. The decomposed body of Stefisa, Stefika Smith in uh, Canefield in Four Paths, Clarendon, yesterday. Two weeks ago, the body of 11-year-old Trisha Morris was found in her community of Woodland in Hanover. And last month, 8-year-old Shante Skyers was also found murdered in Sterling Castle, St. Andrew. Chief Executive Officer of the CPFSA, Rosalie Gage Gray, says strategies within the agency have been or have had to be shifted to see how best to respond to the different cases. Speaking on TVJ's Smile Jamaica program this morning, Mrs. Gage Gray said the gruesome scenes have taken a toll on its staff. Because you're, you're just showing up at um, like an undertaker. And so it, 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 it is pushing yeah. us to think way outside the box mm. in terms of what. Public education is going to be critical. Um, we, Warren can speak to the search and rescue aspect of it. But we normally target um, areas that we're getting other reports from regular abuse or otherwise. But now it's like an island wide. What are you attributing? Records. Meanwhile, she added that it's been difficult for the authorities to pinpoint a reason for the recent murders of young children. You, you normally see social media for the older ones. Mm. You have children who constantly run away. They say you run to something or you run from yeah. something. So the difficulty we have when the children are returned and you want to do that debriefing, <coughs> a lot of them won't say where they went or why they went. Some have um, issues within the family setting. So there was an argument with mommy or daddy or there is some disquiet and I'm going, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. So you, those you can deal with because you know exactly what. Meanwhile, data from the CPFSA noted that there is a return rate of 90% in missing children cases. We have two officers now combing the list of children who are still missing because sometimes they have returned and the, the, the report didn't come back to us or to the police and so they from the calls they have made over the last two weeks we would say a significant up to 60 percent of those children have been returned okay. so we are cleaning that list so that we know you Get know the, realize, with yeah. the police as well what are those um, needs that the family still has mm -hmm. so f especially for those who the children have not returned mm -hmm. the needs are great the psychological yeah, yeah. needs I know, are better great Things got heated inside the St. Catherine Municipal Corporation after one councillor expressed scepticism about how successful the states of emergency SOEs will be. For councillor Roger Curlew, residents won't tell security forces where to find illegal weapons or gunmen because they don't trust the police. This resulted in a clash between JLP and PNP councillors. I will support, Mr. Chairman, a call for a commission of truth and reconciliation as it relates to the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Because as we speak, there is a serious trust deficit serious. in the force. So I don't know when they move into these areas, who's going to give them any information? There is a serious trust deficit in the Jamaica Constabulary Force. So I don't know where we are going as it relates to crime and violence in this country. However, another councillor, Leroy Dunn of Guys Hill, urged his colleagues to support the measure instead of nitpicking. Both political parties have joined hands and hearts, Mr. Chairman, to deal with the issue of crime and violence in this society. This issue, Mr. Chairman, should not be further used as a political football, Mr. Chairman. And I especially don't want it to be used in this chamber as a political football. 
The St. Catherine North Police Division, which falls within the borders of the St. Catherine Municipal Corporation, was recently under a state of emergency. At present, St. James, Hanover, and Westmoreland are under states of emergency. The Integrity Commission has dismissed calls for the Auditor General to be removed from the commission as a misguided move. Commissioner Justice Seymour Panton claimed, or rather slammed the call in yesterday's press briefing held by the Integrity Commission. It's a misguided move to attempt to remove or to think of removing the Auditor General from the Commission. The Auditor General adds a necessary perspective in our deliberations as regards governmental procedures and in relation to misconduct by public officers in the conduct of public affairs. He said the Auditor General has been on previous commissions and no questions were raised. He said the fact that there is discomfort with the room's report is not a reason for people to be calling for the Auditor General to be dismissed from the Integrity Commission. There is no conflict of interest because the Auditor General has to do the same things and more. And if there is something before the Commission which requires further in-depth attention, there's nothing to prevent the Auditor General's office from executing its duties. Meanwhile, the chairman of the Integrity Commission, retired Justice Carl Harrison, has labeled as false reports saying the former Contractor General, Dirk Harrison, has been sidelined. I've had meetings with the Contractor General. I've had meetings with since he has been on board. He's part of what we call the Corruption Prosecution Committee. So that's false. Mr. Harrison has been acting in the role of Director of Corruption Prosecution since his office was merged with that of the Integrity Commission last year. However, reports surface that a rift has developed between Mr. Harrison and the commissioners and that he was sidelined. The commissioners have denied that there is a rift. There seems to be no end in sight for the controversial police chase and shooting on Old Harbor Road in St. Catherine last month, which claimed the life of civilian Kevron Burrell. Kevron's relatives are still upset about the death certificate they received following an autopsy on his body. Kevron lived overseas and was in Jamaica for a funeral. Family members have contacted the Association for Resettlement of Returning Residents for help as they believe even the death certificate they received is invalid. We have more in this report. Last week, Kevron Burrell's father, Michael Burrell, told TVJ News that he was frustrated as, after seeing his son being shot several times, the death certificate listed cause of death as multiple blunt trauma to head and neck. But president of the Association for Resettlement of Returning Residents, Percival Latouche, says in addition to the initial concerns, the certificate has basic errors which may render it null and void. It states on the certificate that Mr. Burrell was killed on the 28th of May. That date of death on this official document is incorrect as the incident happened in April. It was given for, for, to, for burial. Suppose we, we didn't scrutinize it properly and see that it was wrong. We would have buried the man before he, would die, before he died? I mean, I mean somebody, the minister, the commissioner of police, and all these guys around him need to answer this question. I mean, this is a serious... But what if this was genuinely just a mistake with the date? Mr. Latouche says, in light of the controversy surrounding this case, everything needs to be taken more seriously. Now, you cannot make any mistake like that. Got to be a criminal offense. That cannot be a mistake. That got to be a criminal offense. What is happening? A matter of this nature should be thoroughly investigated by the police I command, and I don't know who to trust these days when it comes to the police. I, Percival Latouche, don't know who to trust when it comes to the police because your case could be clear as hell. They have a way of destroying it. As it relates to the family's queries about the cause of death, 
Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang said only the autopsy report would give that detail. However, there is a cause of death listed on the death certificate. Mr. Latouche is again questioning the probe by the police as the family says no one has contacted any of them about the incident. The police commissioner come out and says investigation is ongoing. When does that investigation start ongoing? Because the first place you stop, the first stop is the victim's relatives, father and mother and son. That is where it started, that's where the investigation started. What, the investigation is in the police force? How to cover it up? Or how to dump it? Herman Green, TVJ News. Amid growing concerns locally about the safety of Roundup, one of the most popular weed killers in the world, news that a jury in California has awarded billions of dollars in damages to a couple who says the product is responsible for their cancer. In March, Agriculture Minister Audley Shaw said an investigation had been launched to determine whether Jamaica should impose a ban on the importation and use of the Roundup brand of weed killer. Last month, a multi-agency technical working group was established to investigate the concerns surrounding the use of a Roundup herbicide in Jamaica. But this week, a California court awarded more than two billion U.S. dollars to a couple who blames Roundup for them having cancer. We've been fighting cancer for nine years now, how longer than me, and it was caused by Roundup. Um, it's changed our lives forever. Uh, we can't do the things that we used to be able to do, and we really resent Monsanto for that fact. This is the third time that German pharmaceutical group Bayer has been ordered to pay damages over its glyphosate-based herbicide. Lawyers for the American couple who are in their 70s described the damages award as historic. Jamaican farmers have been getting increasingly worried about whether Roundup is safe to use with bare facing allegations that the product causes cancer. But for president of the Jamaica Agricultural Society, Lenworth Fulton, more research is needed before a stance can be taken by the local authorities. These cases are civil cases that have a lower burden of proof than if they were, if they were criminal cases. And so we depend on these, which I don't think is good enough to take a very hardline decision yet. He is, however, calling for greater dialogue between ministries and universities. I would call on the universities and indeed the Ministry of Health and the two ministers, the Minister of Agriculture and the Minister of Health, to knock head together and come out with a position to guide us in this country on the matter of glyphosate. It is proven that it is dangerous to our health. Yes, anything that is dangerous to our health and would threaten food safety would have to look at it seriously. And that's why we need more information than what is coming on the internet and so forth. Now, because all of those information that I'm seeing is based on the cases in America, which are civil cases. And so it is not strong enough a position to take uh, a drastic move to ban the chemical as yet. Machine Master. In news overseas, social media application WhatsApp has revealed a vulnerability in its system that could have allowed hackers access to its users' phones with a London-based human rights lawyer possibly among the targets. The encrypted messaging service, owned by Facebook, said Monday that it had discovered and fixed the vulnerability the hackers had sought to exploit. According to an expert, the hackers could implant malicious code on a victim's phone by placing a voice call to the victim on WhatsApp. Victims may not even have needed to answer the call for their phone to be infected. We go down to news in sports as the Sunshine Girls' final team selection is now five days away as the selectors were given a May 18 deadline. This as Netball Jamaica is on the final stretch of preparation for this summer's Netball World Cup in Liverpool, England. And that wraps up the Midday News. I'm Herman Green. Join us at 7 for Primetime News. On behalf of the new sports and production teams, good afternoon.